20 Syndicate presents Into the Yonder Void. Welcome back to the D20 Syndicate Podcast. Or just welcome for the first time. Welcome for the first time. Welcome back. Welcome from the future. Season two. Season two. Two. We survived. Wow. Campaign two. We got uh, relit for another season. <laughs> we got picked up by NBC. <laughs> the National Boogie Boarders Convention. <laughs> Thank you for another, another good sponsor. Surprisingly, Tina Fey is producing. <laughs> she uh, loves boogie boards. <laughs> little super thing. into boogie boards. Uh, if this is your first foray into the D20 Syndicate podcast, we are a weekly Dungeons and Dragons. 5e actual play podcast and i am your host and dm seth and around our table we have our players i'm billy and i play nezra the dragonborn wizard warlock uh i'm tomas and i play gildebrand molani he is a hexblood ranger rogue i'm Lindsay, and i play ophelia or fee rhymadori who is a elf, sorcerer, warlock, multiclass. And I'm Michaela, and I play Kanak Anga, a halfling druid. Nice. Well, well met to all of you new characters. As I said, if you're just joining us for the first time, this is the beginning, the very first, the inaugural episode of Season 2 and Campaign 2. Uh, if you'd like to check out Season 1, definitely check out Episode one called Gunky Evil. That's for an entirely different set of characters and a uh, different campaign. However, we are taking place in the same world. This will, as I mentioned before, take place 20 years after the end of campaign one. All right. Uh, apparently we have a review. Yeah. <gasps> we uh, review. During our interim, we had multiple reviews <gasps> and multiple patrons what? jumped on. You know this, Lindsay. Why are you acting surprised? <laughs> it's for drama, Tomas. It, it is drama. It's our podcast. This is theater. Theater. Okay. So this review comes from Nicole W. They went to our website to leave a review. You can do that. You can leave reviews on <laughs> Somehow. Apple Podcasts. You can leave them on Facebook. You can email us. But anyway, this is their review. Message in a bottle. Hey, gang. I've been binging the campaign since April 2021. Just got to the Thanksgiving episode of 2020 and didn't realize how undiscovered you all are. I'm so used to being in giant fandom and to know something that is a bit underground is so new to me. I'm glad you are all doing this and you all allow me to get through my work days. Well, joke's on you, Nicole, because we have blown up big. We're fucking <laughs> huge now. We have that... Just boogie board sponsor. <laughs> so Tina <laughs> Fey is behind us. Yes. So take There's that, no grandma. stopping us. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, thank you for that review. That was excellent. And yeah, yeah. as as an aside, uh, you know, being underground is cool and all, but tell your friends about us, everybody. Please, if you're, yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't hide it under a bush. Yeah, we don't want to be underground. We no, want to be hide overground. it under a bush. Sick of the mine cars. <laughs> yes. Shout don't from the let it tops. shine. Yeah. Let it shine. I yeah. want it to be a secret. No Don't matter how listen to Mika. big we get, just, you know, we could be the best and brightest star in the sky and you should still, that's the one you should see the most. So like if we wanted to be underground, what? we'd just play D&D &D <laughs> underground and then not show anyone. Yeah. Also, we've got some new patrons. What? <gasps> Yes, we have new patrons that joined Boy. on. For some reason, they joined on when we weren't making content, but we appreciate we make, it. Not make content more often. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's the key. We're just printing money. Shout out to Liz, R, Andrew K, uh, Jasper Silver Knight, and Matt L. You welcome, guys. welcome yeah. aboard. You are awesome. Welcome to the D20 Syndicate <laughs> Podcast. Yeah. And if you want to be a patron too, like those cool people, where do they go, Seth? Patreon.com slash D20 underscore syndicate. Aw, oh, yeah. There's a bunch of cool rewards. Yeah. Check out our Discord if you're interested in interacting with the fans. Uh, and some of us will be hanging out in the Discord as well. So we have an, a link to the Discord in our episode description wherever you're listening to it. So check it out. Come hang out. Come share some memes and shit post. 
So you guys might notice that we do some homebrew rules here on the D20 Syndicate podcast. Keep your ears peeled because you'll know you'll notice and pick up on several things that we do a little bit differently maybe than some of your players or the tables you've sat down at in the past. One of the things we do are BAM cards, and that stands for Badass Moments cards. And those can be very heavily narrative moments where the player gets once per arc an opportunity to do some amazing badass thing by throwing down their BAM card and doing something that might not be within the normal bounds of the rules as written. There are stipulations though, right? There are indeed stipulations. You cannot use it to kill a boss. However, you can inconvenience, trick a boss. You can use it to summon help to help you assist in fighting a boss. You can, it doesn't have to even be boss related. Um, it can be to save a fellow party member like in campaign one when- Spoiler. Mm -hmm. Spoiler. Mm. <laughs> That's a good point. If you want to find out, listen to campaign one, dipshit. Why are you listening to this? Evil. Wow, you caught me right there, yeah. All right, now it's time for tonight's Around the Campfire question. <laughs> and now for those of you listening for the first time, Around the Campfire is a question I like to pose to the characters to help them get in character and we kind of oh. pretend that they're well we say it's around the campfire but it always ends up sounding like a talking head like reality TV situation where they're Wait. so low in front of a camera but or like a confessional yeah even. it's weird it's weird but you know what just we we deal with it so you should too so <laughs> for tonight's around the campfire question I want to know these brand new characters of yours what is your favorite food and or meal think about that for a second and I am going to call on Can. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, so I really like, like, all food. Like, there's nothing that I don't really like. I like berries. I like uh, leaves sometimes. Some of them you can eat. I I like fish. Uh, then sometimes, like, when people come in to trade, they'll bring foods in. There was this one. I can't remember what it was called. It was something like a Prince L. I don't know, but it was like it was bread and it was like crisscrossed and it was it was so good. Well, thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Oh, and then there's some other stuff, too, like. <laughs> Swiss cake rolls. <laughs> I haven't tried that, but it's on my list. Uh, then, have you ever had... Did I say berries? You, you did say berries, yes. Okay, well, cool. <laughs> as long as that's in there. <laughs> Thank you. Nezra, tell me your favorite food. I don't necessarily dislike any food. I like to lean more towards... Plants, and Plants. maybe, you know, a little less meat. However, I've got some leaves for you. <laughs> <laughs> I do love leafy greens. Who are you? Um, however, my favorite meal that I've ever had was a Corcolean sea bass paired with an aggressive Zugo wine. <laughs> wow, that sounds really nice. It punched him. <laughs> Very aggressive. Very good. Thank you, Nezra. I appreciate that. Fee. So, damn it. I was going to say berries, but that was already put on the table. So <laughs> Berries are uh, so good. Um, I guess there was this, uh, there was this dish that um, I had before. I think it's called a, a pie. Is that right? It sound, sounds right to me. It was good. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate on that pie at all? I mean, uh, it had like some some goopy insides. It was red, and it was <laughs> sweet. Um, yeah, I mean, it. I ate it with a fork. <laughs> okay, so I think I can probably help you out a little bit here. It was a wild animal. Lots of lots of foods. Lots of foods can be red. So, uh, top of my list here, berries. <laughs> Have you Second, heard of them? Uh, beets. <laughs> uh, <Can> I, that's it. <laughs> if I say there were berries in the pie, does that not count as my answer because you already said berries? I, I Can berries be said twice? 
I think there's enough berries to go around. I mean, they just they keep growing. <laughs> it was a berry pie, sir. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for that. I I appreciate it. Gil. Well, I'm much more of a, a drink guy than I am a food guy. I eat if I'm going to die or something, but I really like shrooms of different varieties. Uh, I know this guy named uh, Dreg, and he was my shroom guy in the Feywild. Uh, and he hooks, me, he hooks you up with some wild shrooms, man. Um but I don't really eat them for sustenance, so I guess hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Thanks, Gil. I appreciate that. No problem, man. <clears throat> All right. Well, guys, should we get started? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Well, I would like to be the first to welcome you all. To the D20 Syndicate Podcast second campaign, season two, <laughs> into the Yonder Void. Yes, yes, yes. Into the Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Storms. Storms were not a good sign. Captain Cecil Redflower looked out at the vast horizon before him and frowns. His ship was slated to make its usual monthly journey from the port city of Albon in Starstrom and around the Horn to the north before arriving at its final destination in Kalayagon. But by the looks of the forecast, he thought that perhaps they'd be waylaid. He summons his barrelman with a whistle, two quick pipes with his fingers in his mouth, and the little half-elf climbs over the lip of the crow's nest to shout down to his captain. What is it, Cap? We got a storm, ferret. Captain Redflower demands, pointing out toward the darkening sky. Aye, says Ferret, throwing one hand up in confusion. You didn't need to tell me that, though. How bad? I might, Ferret shouts. We going round? Aye, the captain returns, and wheels back to face the squall still a few hours off. He can't be sure, but there's something unnatural about the gathering darkness. If you've seen a thousand and one storms like Redflower, you can start to see the subtle differences in their make. He was growing concerned that the golden flash might be heading toward a bad morning indeed. Jarek, he calls out, and his quartermaster, a grizzled old human, comes running. Captain, Jarek wonders. Wake all the passengers. Better they're awake for this. A couple of them look sturdy enough to get out here anyways. Bring them round and see if they want to help us not die. Will do, Captain. What about the thief? What? The thief, Captain. The one we caught trying to steal the golden flash last night. He's in the hold. If and we take on water, he's the first drowned. Bring him topside. If he wants to leap off deck once he's here, then let Mother Rias have him. But better to give even a lousy burglar a fighting chance. As you like, Captain. One of the cabin doors opens, and a large form emerges. Taller than probably anyone else on the ship, but with a more relaxed posture than what would be found among the rough seafaring denizens, a dragonborn stretches his limbs in the chilly morning air. If someone aboard were versed in dragon kind, they'd have known that this individual was young, just approaching adulthood or even recently arriving there. His white scales glitter in the sunlight as he shifts his shawl around his shoulders and yawns. He leans his thin frame against the large, knotted staff at his side and finds the stable comfort of having it near. Nezra Kaziel peers out across the deck into the sprawling ocean beyond. It's such an unnatural sight to see nothing but cool blue in every direction, a far cry from how it appeared on the shore as he'd visited in his life. Rather than becoming frightened by the prospect of such vast and unknown territory, Nezra feels the flush of excitement in his stomach. This was a journey. He was finally out exploring the world, and nothing could dampen that feeling not even the curiously dark curtain of clouds growing larger and larger along the horizon. Hmm, absolutely beautiful, he says. I could not ask for a better morning. Nezra smiles to himself. Come what may, he would soon have the answers he sought out. The last few goose chases would be left only to his memory. Goose. Well, we, I'll reread that. No, I like it. <laughs> well, it was fine. Can we call them gooses forever? <laughs> Basil goose. <laughs> But first, breakfast. A mane of flowing red-brown hair whips in the ocean wind as a woman stands, staring out at the sea from the stern of the ship. 
The sun has just risen not an hour ago, and with it also dawns a new season. Autumn has arrived. She sighs contentedly and examines her pale skin. No matter how often the seasons changed, she never quite got over the initial sensation of a fresh one. She takes a deep breath and fills her lungs with the salty air. Ophelia Rye Midori turns and sees that the deck is quickly filling up with the deckhands and a few of the other passengers. This seems like quite the fortuitous timing. Making sure that no one is looking directly at her, the elf pulls what appears to be a branch, or perhaps it's some sort of wand, from her flowing red-orange dress. Then she stomps twice on the deck and brandishes the stick. Cart! She commands, and suddenly the bit of wood in her hand leaps away and springs to life. It grows and elongates, sections topple out of it and fuse together until there's a rickety wooden little wagon in front of her. Ophelia nods, then immediately fixes her eyes on the passersby. Get your trinkets and tinctures quick before they're gone. Gildebrand Milani feels himself lurch and groans, batting, <sighs> batting at the source of his annoyance. Finding nothing but air, he opens one eye. This is a mistake. The moment the dim mage light touches his sight, he realizes exactly how hungover he is. He looks down at his beer-stained clothing, already shabby, and now with a fresh new aroma that may have been vomit. A hard-looking human man stands above him, peering down through the slats of the cargo hold's door. Get up, thief, the man says, and Gil can hear the deafeningly loud clack and grind of a key turning in the lock. Gil had known it was a terrible idea to try and commandeer the vessel after learning the news. He really had, but after two drinks it had seemed merely unwise. He'd tossed his half-finished tenth drink off the starboard of the ship itself. Fortunately, he thought he'd be able to escape fairly easily and lose the crew in the crowd. Hold on. Familiarity fills him. A gentle keening and swaying. Gil knows that sensation. Dread fills his chest. They'd already set sail. Ah, horse piss. Not again. Keep that upbeat attitude with you, the human says, wrenching the door open. You're wanted topside. Captain's orders. With a splitting headache, Gil can do nothing but groan and acquiesce to his command. He stands up, his stocky frame feeling unwieldy because of his condition. His horns scrape the lip of the opening as he woozily tries to clamber out into the painfully bright morning sun. The human whistles as he emerges. You're rather purple, he says, referencing Gil's skin tone. I'm a plum, Gil corrects, reaching up groggily to ensure his eye patch is still in the proper place over his eye. Sure thing, Lilac, the human says. This way. All of the crew and passengers are gathered onto the deck. The captain explains the scenario to everyone. A strange storm is gathering on the horizon and moving quickly toward the ship. Redflower explains that they have been running from it, trying to get abreast of it. But the wall of wind seems to be following their direct route. Something is strange, and Redflower explains that even though it seems odd, they're going to do what they can to get everyone to a safe port. The ship's crew acts as one, the captain barking orders in a loud voice that's still easily audible over the roaring wind. In the chaos, Gil looks across the deck and thinks he sees a familiar face. He's not positive, but he thinks he sees Ophelia. The storm gains traction, getting closer and closer, and all of you can see inside the large, swirling mass are bolts of what appears to be magical lightning flashing around within. The winds pick up the very ocean itself, dragging it around the circumference of what appears to be a very large eye of the storm. The color is dark, and as it pursues, it gets louder and louder and louder, until it's almost upon you all. Gil, you look around. You read the ship's manifest on the post last night, and it was bound for the north of Starstrom. But as you take the lay of the sea, you know the ship is now horribly off course. You've gone this direction before. Are they planning to... A sudden wave crashes over the deck, and all you see is the helmsman being washed overboard, leaving the wheel of the vessel unmanned and spinning. I thought they were working as a unit! <laughs> <laughs> Gil, you see this opportunity. There's no time and no one to spare their actions. You leap across the rocking deck and grab the spokes of the wheel and begin steering it away from the storm again. Nezra, you watch as debris spinning from the breaking ship flies around 
as one of the lifeboats has come loose and is careening toward two of the sailors manning the ropes, too busy trying to keep the mast from splintering to react until it is too late. You move. In less than a second, you're towering over them, your arms out as you mutter under your breath and gesture with your staff. Your body is wrapped in magic just as the boat crashes against you with a crunch and rebounds overboard. You are unharmed, but watch the grateful gaze of the stunned sailors who were hair's breadth away from being obliterated. Carry on, friends, you say. Suddenly, there's an awful pop and a rip as more debris punctures the sails. We're doomed, a sailor shouts. Not yet, we aren't, Fee exclaims and races over to the mast, her hand clenching her necklace tightly. The yanking of the ropes has forced the sail close to the deck, and Fee finds that the tear is just within reach. Fee fi fo <laughs> She slaps her palm against the torn fabric and concentrates. The chaos of the storm rages around her, but she holds her focus, and after a minute, the sail weaves itself back together. All looks lost. Suddenly, the captain is hit by a barrel, and it disables him. He leaps to the wheel and stares you in the eyes, Gil. You release the wheel, and eventually the ship begins to tear apart against the wrath of the magical storm. Gil, you see one remaining lifeboat tangled in a rope over the side and shout to anyone who will listen to run toward it. Then you mutter under your breath and remove the cane at your side. Then you slice through the ropes easily, and the boat drops to the water. All of you hurl yourselves into the waves and swim to the boat. Twelve people in total make it. Nezra shields everyone while Fee blasts other bits from getting too close. Gil just screams at two sailors to row, directing them. All of you watch as the storm tears the ship to shreds. And then, once you're far enough away, you see the storm begins to disperse and the sun emerges. Gil, you know that there is a place close enough that you think you can make it in several shifts if everyone pulls their weight. Everyone other than the sailors collapses in a heap and passes out from exhaustion, heading west, away from Argaria, and into the Yonder Void. Oh, shit. <laughs> the sun dawns on a brilliant oceanscape. The shoreline is still, and though there is very little movement among the trees, there are two forms basking in the shallow waters. A small halfling in handmade clothing, stalks along the shore next to a brilliantly blue toed humanoid. They have dark hair and skin like hammered bronze, which in the light seems to take on an iridescent, multicolored hue. Kanaganga climbs out of the water. So am I getting this right? You're from the Yonder Void? Like her island is... Mm, wow. That's fun. That's dope. You exotic thing, you. <laughs> I'm seashells. <laughs> <laughs> Kanaganga climbs out of the water after sifting through the silt for pretty stones and looks up. On the horizon, moving slowly toward them, is an object. A boat carrying people. Peach! Check it out! The blue creature stares out, squinting. What do you think it is? That, my friend... That's adventure. All right, you guys are rudely awakened, those of you who have passed out from exhaustion, by the shouts of the sailors rowing. I'm contributing. I'm just going, mush, mush, <laughs> mush, <laughs> stroke. Gil, you recognize this shoreline. You have been here once before, long ago, and it was a night of revelry. I say, like, in situations like this, I need to roll to see if I remember anything. Because <laughs> if I'm reveling... <laughs> then... You know, that's a great point. Gil, I would like you to roll history. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Got a 17? Uh, you remember this location. It uh, was a night of drunken revelry, but you, re you remember that uh, this is the island of Luta. One of five in a kind of a community of islands that are controlled largely by the whale song halfling. A, uh, an interesting sub-race that seems to only exist here. Oh shit, guys, be careful. We are in a weird place. Nezra, you finally rouse, and Fee, you also kind of rouse. As you guys see, you guys are a little bit away from the shore, and there seems to be two small forms standing out there waving you in. 
Now, easy, because I think these might be the halfling cannibals that eat people. <laughs> I can speak for us, if that's cool. I, I have a way with islanders, so I can do this. I got this. <laughs> but if they start eating me, just paddle away. <laughs> <laughs> then I hop out of the boat, probably too soon before we're like fully yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. So it's like really <laughs> All right, give me, a, give me an athletics check for swimming. Ooh, your eye patch comes off in the water. That's a nineteen. <laughs> All right, yeah, you you nice. you. I realize it's too, it's too close <laughs> or it's too far away, but yeah, you kind of pop back up and, and start bobbing up and down like a expertly, <laughs> expertly in the water as the rest of you pass him right by in the boat, <laughs> getting closer to shore. <laughs> Can you see this group of individuals looking very haggard, uh, approaching the, sh the shore, not too far from your village. Peach, we have to go help. All right, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll tell him in. And you watch as this humanoid toad sh like strips off his outer layer and jumps wow. into the water in an arc <laughs> and then swims underneath the boat. And suddenly, everyone on the boat, you feel a lurch as you're suddenly piloting much quicker towards the shore until you hit the uh, hit the beach. How sexy is this frog person? He's. So when he climbs out of the water, <laughs> he's it's like that uh, 007 movie with Daniel Craig. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like super small drone. Um, he uh, he's about four foot tall, kind of stocky and a little bit pudgy, big eyes. Looks pretty young, so gross. <laughs> <laughs> fucking weirdo. That sultry music still playing. <laughs> He's got, yeah, bright bright the wild thing skin. soundtrack plays. And none of you ha would have seen anything like his kind before. Not even me. Not even you. Wow. Well, I think they've reeled us in <laughs> to start eating. So yeah, you guys are at this. Not on my watch! <laughs> as I'm still swimming <laughs> to the beach. So Gil, as you get to the shore... You see that there is this interesting hued halfling and a frog like creature. And give me another history check. Ugh, eight. As far as you know, you've never seen either of these two in your entire <laughs> life. Can? Mm hmm. You recognize immediately without a roll that this is Gildebrand. Wait a second. By the way, he looks a lot different than when Can probably last saw him, though, because, uh, in the time that he's been at uh, port or whatever, he's mm -hmm. like gained like a lot of weight. His clothes are a lot frumpier. Um, She'd probably still recognize. I'm just saying, then. like she'll you'll notice that at okay. least. So it is a different appearance. Okay, so, but it's definitely like if you squint, you can tell that this is Gildebrand. Yeah, I squint and kind of like hold my. <laughs> Hold my fingers up in a little square so I can kind of look through. Wait a second. Are you that guy who was here a long time ago? You've been here. Greg? Are you Greg? No, no. Uh, can. Can. Yeah. Yeah. Also, can you remember <laughs> recently you sent word trying to find Gildebrand to come assist you with something, if you'll recall. So, you got my message. That's right, kid. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> okay, well, you must be getting messages from a lot of people because... All the time. You thought it was Greg, and I don't even know if we have a Greg here, but... I'm glad it's not Greg, because then we would have had a way different conversation. <laughs> Nezra, wow. you're able to climb out of the boat and take assessment of this odd situation. Ophelia, uh, you are as well. You guys kind of realize that you two are doing a great bulk of the protecting during the uh, ship being attacked by the storm. Game recognized game. Game yeah. recognized game yeah. indeed. Um, but also, you, you know, you, you're seeing a weird kind of connection between these two. One of them seems to know the other one. But also, you would notice that well, I guess Ophelia, are you, or Fee, have you been, like, looking at <laughs> Gil, like, with recognition, or... 
Um, so he's like, when I saw him, I wasn't super. It's only remembering. Been, yeah, it's only been a f- like less than a decade, but yeah. Um, but like, I don't know. I might vaguely remember the face. Would be my thinking. Okay, so there's something. There's some recognition. We'll I'm say. definitely wearing different clothes. Like, <laughs> back, I would hope so. Back when I was doing the uh, the Mark Lord stuff. I had a different outfit altogether, but this is more of like, it looks like what used to be fancy clothes, but it has been scuffed up and stained sure. over time. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. Are you negotiating the non-eating of us? Is it going well? Yeah, guy, I'm totally convincing them. Excellent. You guys can like come ashore and hop out. I just, I gesture to them and like, <laughs> like Wait. I totally sealed the deal So did you bring them to help? Did she say bring them to eat? <laughs> yeah, yeah We all came on this little boat To help you guys Oh my god, I was losing all hope But this uh, <laughs> This Gilson's seems smiling good. <laughs> with No knowledge of what <laughs> No, now, now I, th- I Okay, so uh, What's the plan? Uh well, can, we're can, 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 they just, there, something obviously happened to them. We should bring them to the village. They oh look my disgruntled. Peach. Yeah, that's kind of rude. Are, I mean, I would love to help, but we kind of need to You're right. okay, like, relax okay, okay. a little while. Are we first. all there yet? Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to the come back to the village and we can like, we can all have some food. We've got some berries and stuff. So mm, do you have berries any? are good. Berries are good. Do you have any drinks? Do you make drinks with the berries? We make all kinds of drinks. So we have water. Yeah. We have um, water with berries in it. Man, I drink a lot of water. <laughs> Berry infused water. We have ale. We have excellent. Let's go. <laughs> Is soliciting okay? You. Oh, are, are you like a trader also? We get oh. traders out here all the time, so like, just do your thing. Set up wherever you want. Okay, sounds good. Uh, do I? You look really familiar. Me? Why does everyone keep saying that? I just have one of those faces, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's the eye patch. Yeah. I mean, maybe I Wait, did get this at I a store. It, yeah. I maybe might could have with like, sold you before. Wait, are either of you Greg? Are you Greg? I didn't ask you. Because I could have, like, I could help clear this up a little. If you're Greg, I'm going to have to run away, because... Am I? I'm not Greg. No. All right. You tell me if you were Greg. I'm Nezra. I... Nezra? Yeah. No one calls me Greg, right? I'm I'm not Greg. You look like a Drake. (laughs) (laughs) A Drake? I might call you Drake. That's a cool name. Is that a joke? What do you mean? (laughs) <laughs> I don't get it. Is he offended? I hope not. It's hard to tell. <laughs> he, he's smiling still. At that moment, <laughs> several, <laughs> several of the like people that were on the boat like push past you guys, and they like stare directly at you. Can one is a uh, uh, like a human, and he's he's got two like teenage uh, half elf children and a half elf woman full, uh, adult with him, and he like p- he like. Stands above you and stares down. Hey, we just survived just the absolute worst event ever. Where can we go to get some rest and f- sort this thing out? Because we've got to be in uh, Kalayagon in like t- in two weeks. So, how are you going to oh. resolve this situation? Uh, well, I don't. That's a long way. Hey, so Gary, this I don't isn't know if a resort or anything. Be lucky that I led us here. He just stares daggers at you. I don't know how to resolve your travel problems, but um, if you want some berries, <laughs> uh, if you want water, ale, anything like that, just come to town. He, like, frowns. He looks over at his, like, apparent wife and children, and they kind of look back at him. We'll go to town. And they, they march off. And then I lean into Gil and... and Historically, I don't know if I would call that the worst event ever. I mean, it was pretty bad, but 
ostensibly that not the is worst ash ever. day for me. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> You guys also noticed that there's uh, several other people that kind of <laughs> the rest of his family of... was on the ship and they <laughs> died. <laughs> you noticed that other than the sailors and you three that were on on there, um, it was kind of hard to tell during the you know the rowing, <laughs> but uh, the most of the people other than the two sailors were passengers on the ship. Um, there's also a uh, did they make it? I mean, they they were in the little the rowboat with you. Um, oh, okay. The, there were 12 of you in total. But they weren't crew of the ship? No, most of them weren't crew. Oh, gotcha. It seemed like they ushered the Sorry. most of the... I thought you were leading up to, like, the casualty count here. Oh, no. <laughs> like, you'll notice that most of the people are dead. No, yeah, the, the, the 12, of the 12 people aboard, you were three of them, and then the other nine were, were well, two of them were sailors, and then the rest were passengers on the ship for whatever reason. You notice okay. that there's a, uh, there is a human noble... A human merchant and a dwarven merchant on board. You can tell by kind of the way they're they're dressed, and they seem a little like kind of ruffled. But they climb off and they sort of like stare around and then wander off towards the direction that can indicated. Okay. I think they might get lost out there, but oh well, uh, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. It, uh, you, you know what? I'll I'll lead them. You guys, uh, I don't know. And he just <laughs> <laughs> runs off. Are there clear markers to town? Uh, I'm... Do you know how to read tree? I don't think so. Okay, well, first step is learn that. <laughs> and then, yeah, clear markers the whole way. <laughs> I go up to a random tree. Yeah, you see, like, this has ridges on it? That means you go down where the ridges go, Right. That's close, but I th- I guess that could just be like a something that's lost in translation. I don't know. Um, maybe it's the dialect. We're from different but, places. Maybe I don't. I haven't been a lot of places, so I'm sure there's some some other trees that say some other stuff. I don't know. So, hmm. if you guys want to go to town. We can do that, and then we can we can sit around. We can have some berries, have some water, some ale, because it sounds like that's what you like. <laughs> and then we can talk about the plan. Ophelia, give me a perception check. Okay. Ooh, I rolled a twenty. Nice. A natural twenty. Yeah. Twenty two. First one of the campaign. Nice. The f- yeah. Boom, First boom. natural <laughs> twenty of the campaign. Roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> Fee. Mm-hmm. You hear a weird sound. <laughs> From where you guys just arrived from, Aww. across the water. Sounds like a... <laughs> you turn and you look, and you can see there's shapes darting along in the water towards you guys, getting closer and closer. What the hell is that? Do you guys ignore her, or do you... <laughs> I look. What? look. What's what? What kind of berries are you... Do you see him moving? Give me oh, a shit. perception check with advantage, everyone. That's an 18... 18? Everybody, but except for Fee doesn't have to. I got a natural 20 as well. Whoa! Yes. All right. You fucking liar. No. <laughs> 22. Man, skills are weird at level three. Yeah, they are. It's bizarre. I love it. It's weird. 18. New stats. You said two advantage, right? And two 22s. Wow. That's wow. weird. What that the is fun? weird. Whoa. Yeah. Wow, nice job, guys. This is weird and kids. We're so good wow. at this. <laughs> we're going to win D&D. <laughs> we're going to win today. We're gooder. All right, you guys see a group of individuals swimming harshly through the water. They're, uh, <laughs> their, <laughs> their skin is uh, kind of a silvery gray, and they flash up. They seem to have been trailing you. And they leap out of the water into the shallows of the shore. And you see these strange aquatic faces with thinned, like, sides of their heads. Very, like, lean, muscular bodies. And they're holding tridents. And I'm going to need you guys to roll for initiative. Uh, Have I seen these before? Um, Give me a history check. Yeah, how familiar would I be? You, this is very unfamiliar to you, for oh. sure. For oh. history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got, you've never seen one of these before. I've got I, 18 on an ish, though. Oh, nice. I got five. 16? 
Uh, you would have disadvantage probably mm -hmm. because of the unlikelihood. So go ahead and roll again with disadvantage, and then let me know what you get. Unlikelihood of what? Being having seen one of these. Oh, I thought you were saying your initiative was sixteen. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yep. I thought you were rolling history as well. No, I apologize. No. Okay, sixteen. Gotcha. Can I roll history? Um, if you can explain why you would possibly know what these things are. From uh, reading different books and stuff in the past, I delved through a library, been to some places, maybe stumbled upon some information from people. Okay, go ahead and roll yeah. history. <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nuts. Schnope. Five. Five. <laughs> All right. You know slightly more than me. <laughs> you actually forgot. <laughs> You just I got forgot more information. Six for initiative. You six read for too initiative. Many books. All right, what did everybody else get for initiative? 18. 16. Five? Damn. 18, 16, five, six. That's one of the sailors next near you guys. <clears throat> did we lose any gear when the ship happened? Uh, you would have your bait, like anything you could have fit in your pack, you'd still probably have. Okay. Um,. But we can assess after the battle to see if there was anything that was lost in, like, the skirmish, like, smaller items. So, from the water emerges these creatures, and you they're brandishing their, their tridents at you, and the first one, the one in the middle, rushes forward and starts rattling its trident in the air and speaks in an unintelligible to any of you guys language just like a and I think he's negotiating for peace mm -hmm. and then is that you Nez targets you since you're dead in center and hurls the trident at you and what is your AC 11 uh, well a 12 will hit <laughs> uh, oh, so that yes. hits you just it's like a glancing blow this trident just like flashes and uh, kind of collapses into the water, into the into the beach, and you'll take one point of damage. All right. Shit. All He's right. He's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> He's bleeding out. They don't want peace. <laughs> <laughs> they want to cook us. <laughs> Gil, it is now your turn. Uh, well, having seen the <laughs> the trident hucking, um, I'm gonna look to the. Uh, does he look armed now that he threw the trident, or has he just got the floppy arms? He's got floppy arms, so they have razor-sharp claws on him. I'm going to... So my uh, my left eye is green and looks pretty normal, but I'm going to take my uh, eye patch, and I'm going to flip it up, and it's like... It looks almost draconic. It's got like a, like a sharp pupil, and it's like yellow and stuff but it's going to start glowing and I'm going to shoot a beam out of it at the guy and I'm going to cast Hex on him. He's bringing Hexy back. And then uh, <laughs> I'm going to growl and I'm going to hold out my hands and the the gloves on my hands, you'll see the, the fingertips have already been torn off. But then from there, I'm going to grow claws and I'm going to cast Ooh. Primal Savagery yeah. and I'm going to run up to him. Can I hit him? Go ahead and roll to attack. Ooh, damn. Nine. Nine does not hit, unfortunately. So you swipe through the air, and he moves, like, very lithely out of the way, and... And he's going to counter-strike at you. Back at you, buddy! And I'm going to assume that an eight does not hit you. Nope. All right. So that was his counter-strike. Okay, Fee, it is your turn. Hmm... It's not too late. Can you please just turn back around? We don't need to do this. We just got here. <sighs> it seems like your words fall on deaf or ununderstanding ears. And they... I saw them hurt Nez. Immediately. Oh, gosh. And then she'll this, end up... <laughs> this what? guy has disadvantage on strength checks, by the way. Okay. So at first, Fee has this kind of scared expression, and then she closes her eyes as one hand grasps her necklace, the other reaches out, and she suddenly looks up and opens her eyes as they shine with a piercing golden light, and her once kind of scared face 
transforms into a confident, angry stare as she pushes her hand forward and out shoots a golden light, appearing like like tree vines in its shape. And I'm going to hit the firing dude as I cast uh, Eldritch Blast for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Um, but yeah, so let me roll, see if I hit it. I rolled a 20. Oh, shit. God damn. Yeah. Two 20s? Yeah. You get Jesus. to roll for each uh, beam, too. Oh, yeah. man. So how many, is it two beams right now? Okay. It should say how many beams you get. Two beams at fifth level. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, one beam right now. Okay. So you rolled a natural 20, so go ahead. That definitely hits. So what's your max? It uses yeah. a d10 plus four, so 14. Yep. All right. Plus five. Plus five. Mm-hmm. All right. So you have done... Sp- 19. 19 damage. I said 16. I can math. Mm-hmm. Um, you have done damage to this thing as uh, it kind of roars in and attacks, and suddenly, show me what you got. Oh, oh man. Right out of the gate. Oh, first kill. <laughs> it didn't have to be this way. Bloodthirsty little girl. Not really. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't think I'd be killing someone this fast. Someone. So what do, <laughs> how did what do this we do? happen to me? <laughs> I can also describe it if you'd like. Yeah, maybe. Because I, I mean, I kind of described the spell how she's just super confident and the light and the viney things. So yeah, what do the vines do when they kill? Somebody? So I would say that the vines like it's like a flavor of the bean. Yeah, it kind of swirl around and stab into this creature, push through, and then <laughs> rip it in half. And then just two sides fall directly in front of you, <clears throat> Gil. You just watch as it just goes. Seeing the beam, I'm going to look back at her, and then I'm going to remember. <laughs> <laughs> then I choose to remember. <laughs> Memory unlocked. And he looks kind of scared. And then she'll say, it didn't have to be this way. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I like to imagine the demons and evil dead just being like super reluctant, like, we don't want to. Just leave the cabin. <laughs> um, Wait. So are these are these guys not friends? Then they did not come on the boat. <laughs> that wasn't the question, though. So like, are they, but are they like friends? I, I look at my my arm that's bleeding, and I look back <laughs> at the can still sticking out of them. <laughs> yeah, like I don't think they're friends. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, the we'll do the gray one. Uh, one of them is going to march up 20 feet and is going to and hurl its trident at Gil. It does a 15 hit. 15 is my AC. So do you guys want to do Ty goes to the defender or Ty goes to the aggressor? How do you guys want to start this campaign? I am indifferent. We Don't we normally do defender? Mm-hmm. We yes, can go right. with that, and then... Okay. I mean, or just, we could be the winners. And then we can change it, you know, whenever it suits us best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only like, when it don't suits you remember us best. We changed yeah. it. What's that? Does that sound fair? <laughs> sure. Do we want to flip for it? <laughs> um, no, because we're going to forget. <laughs> let's just, yeah, let's decide let's here and now. Hard, firm rule. Just defender. Let's defender, just stick defender, with that everyone. way. Defender, defender, everyone. You'll get your chance, quarter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a special quarter that you're yeah. just like, oh, god damn Like, it. this is the one. This they is the need one. to see the other side. It's, <laughs> it's so part cool. of my origin it's story. Boobies. It's part of my origin story. <laughs> it's a Nike symbol. So, Ty goes the defender. So, this trident comes up, and you immediately just, like, smack it out of the air, Gil, and it kind of... <laughs> <laughs> with my claw hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, yeah, really shittily made metal trident. So, you just... Smack it out of the air, and it's blah, 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 and you watch as it kind of bears its fingers at you. Can it is now your turn? Okay, double checking. Not friends. No chance for friendship. Not friends. Okay. Confirmed. All right. So I am going to cast entangle. Okay. Go ahead and read that spell. Grasping weeds and vines sprout from the ground in a 20-foot square starting from a point within range. For the duration, these plants turn the ground in the area into difficult terrain. A creature in the area when you cast the spell must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained by the entangling plants until the spell ends. A creature restrained by the plants can use its action to make a strength check against your spell save DC. On a success, it frees itself. Okay, well, he's going to have disadvantage on this because this will create a very bad situation for something that is not used to any kind of land uh, as opposed to just water. So 
Which one are you targeting? The one in front of me? Yeah, it's a 20 foot square. Cool. So you're going to target both of them? Mm hmm. Okay, so they both got nine. That So they are entangled. So now these two are struggling as these like seaweed starts like coming up and wrapping around their legs and arms and they're like fighting to get out of it. And now they are entangled. And that means they'll, everyone will have a, a advantage, correct? Yes. So yeah, their, their speed is zero. Uh, they have no benefit bonus to their speed. You all have advantage and they have disadvantage on attack rolls. Uh, they also have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Nez, it's your turn. All right, I am going to cast Armor of Agathus. Okay. Right. How does that look? So I kind of just plant my staff in the sand, and I hold up one hand, and it starts to glow blue, and what looked like an empty, uh, just sort of like tangled branch at the top of my staff, there's suddenly an aura that looks like an orb that's glowing blue as well. And it kind of looks like, uh, like if it were nighttime only in the orb, like little blue fireflies were dancing around inside of it. And then like a, a sheen kind of just washes over me and outlines my entire body. Very cool. All right. Is that your action? Yes. Okay. Now it is Far Guy's turn. So one of these creatures tries to struggle to get out but <laughs> they do not, I'm not even going to re-roll. <laughs> um, they cannot get out. They're trying to cut with their trident, and they're actually accidentally cutting themselves, trying to get out. I was going to say, doing, accidentally behead themselves. <laughs> and getting frustrated, looks over and sees the biggest thing on the, on the beach is Nez, and now that it's all shiny, wants to attack it. So it hurls. It's trident, your direction, at disadvantage, because that's farther than it can go. Does a 12 hit? 11, yep. Okay, so... <laughs> Deep right in, so... <laughs> <laughs> like Ace Ventura? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this other one just glances into you, <laughs> just right off there, and you will take six damage. Ouch. <laughs> Which, with, oh, no. with yeah. Armor of Agathus, is only one. One is nice. five temporary hit points. Very cool. Oh, so it's it's like kind of piercing like a frosted Nez or something. So it yeah. doesn't go in as hard or does something. That dis, does that dispel your Armor of Ag Agathus? No, I don't. Well, now that the HP is depleted. Five. It's considered a ranged attack too, right? Because he threw it? Yeah, it's a thrown weapon. So yep. it's not a melee attack? Mm -mm. Okay. It gives you five temp HP, right? Yeah, that's it. Yes, I think it would disperse. Right? I believe that's how it works. Okay. So I was just double checking as well. Um, cool. <clears throat> all right. So it disperses and you only take one damage. So it could have been a lot worse. The armor just kind of like, ping, like it barely grazed you. So this one like flips off into the water. It caused shrapnel into the water. To <laughs> slice me in the cheek. <laughs> yeah, it's very anime style. Um, the sailor on the shore is a human. And he's going to pick up the oar, like scowl, and he's going to run out, <laughs> wading into the water. Arr, get out of here, you whatever you are. Wade in the water. Watch for the seaweed. <laughs> uh, oh. And uh, how far did you move him up? 30. Okay, yep. He's at empty max. He's going to, like, stand there and try to look intimidating. <laughs> because he can't do anything else because all he has Wars is an orb. Of fury. <laughs> damn it. Nice. You can have nothing because we're doing milestone now. Fuck. Oh, no. Point of boon. <laughs> Absolutely not. Not yet. Um, I'll think of something. Maybe we'll do inspiration points, like up to a certain point, and then you can have inspiration. Um, okay. We'll see. Maybe not. Don't quote me on I that. I mean, that's better than forgetting Nothing. inspiration <laughs> even exists, because that's yeah. what we do most of the time. Yeah, because we have so much cooler stuff than inspiration mm -hmm. uh, in the last campaign. All right. That brings it back to Gil. Uh, <clears throat> since that other guy is dead, I'm going to use my bonus action to focus my hex beam out of my eye at the guy in front of me. Okay. Uh, and strength will be his ability check that he fucks up. Uh-huh. Um, 
He doesn't roll for anything. Oh, I thought, well, he's going to after this anyway, so. Okay. Um, so I'll just pre-roll it. And then I'm going to run up and I'm going to hit him with my claws. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Watch out for the seaweed. <laughs> That's a 22 to hit. That hits for sure. Fuck yeah. So that is 10 S damage and since, oh, um, and then four regular damage. Oh, he gave himself advantage? Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, he has advantage because he's entangled. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so 14 total, 10 of it acid. Show me what you got. All right. So I'm just going to take my claws and I'm just going to rake down his face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you guys watch as it just like parts like very Twine. like Yeah. Like, like uh, <laughs> butter. Like it just, it, their skin seems super malleable and it just, <laughs> and then just crumbles. We're having sash sashimi. <laughs> All right, Fee, there is one creature left. Okay, so if anyone looked back at her right now, you would notice that her appearance has changed to now golden hair mm -hmm. with some fiery undertones and golden shimmer to her, to her skin. Um, and she looks a lot more angry. And so, and I mean, I said confident a million times, but uh, yeah, she looks super confident now. So now she'll kind of just do a side step out and then hold on to her necklace and just um, hold out her hand and Eldritch Blast this right. dude. Roll to attack. Okay. I shall. And you would have advantage on this. Okay. All right. So 20. To hit? Yep. It hits. Okay. Roll your 1d10 plus 4. Roll not some ones for damage, but that'd be 5 damage. 5 damage. All right. Is that the end of your turn? Um, you know, yeah. All right. Uh, can, it is your turn. Can you feel it? Can you dig it? Can you feel the love tonight? Okay. I will cast Dust Devil. All right. That sounds mm. cool. Yeah. Please read that spell. Choose an unoccupied five-foot cube of air that you can see within range. An elemental force that resembles a dust devil appears in the cube and lasts for the spell's duration. Any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the dust devil must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes 1d8 bludgeoning. Oh, wait, can I push it around? Are you able to move it on your turn? Oh, okay. It's a bonus action. Sorry. They have to make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes 1d8 bludgeoning damage and is pushed 10 feet away. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and is not pushed. Oh, fuck. This is a concentration spell. Do you not want to t cast that, then? No, I'm going to cast it, but I'm going to have to drop concentration on... Well, yeah, you've only got one left. Um, if you want to use this to signify where the dust devil is. Okay, so on a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and is not pushed. As a bonus action, you can move the Dust Devil up to 30 feet in any direction. If the Dust Devil moves over sand, dust, loose dirt, or small gravel, it sucks up the material and forms a 10-foot radius cloud of debris around itself that lasts until the start of your next turn. The cloud heavily obscures its area. Awesome. So, so that's he going can't to, throw shit for yeah, shit in there. Yeah, that's going to obscure a lot because there's definitely going to be some like silt going up in there. In a 10 foot radius. So <laughs> he's getting, he can't really see that well. Uh, it's a de uh, dex or strength save to resist. That is a strength save of 14. Okay. And do I have disadvantage on, nope, just dexterity. Um, that is a 13. So I, I want to use my bonus action to move the dust devil yeah. onto the, yeah, that you absolutely creature. can. Yep. Go ahead. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Go ahead and put him on top of it and move it into his space. So now can there is you, the, you guys see this like swirling vortex it? out there <laughs> in front of Can. Uh, how did you cast the spell? How did it look? I stick my hands out like palms up in front of my face and just kind of blow over them. Mm -hmm. Like <sighs> oh, like you're blowing it into existence and <laughs> yes. very cool. So yeah, you guys watch as this this creature <laughs> in the water is suddenly sucked into this fucking vortex and disappears from view. Nezra, it is now your turn. So I can't see him anymore? You cannot. He's in the dust devil, though. <laughs> so. Aim he's... for that. <laughs> Sandstorm starts playing. It'd be really unfortunate if these guys were just, like, trying to sell shit. 
<laughs> Buy my trite and see how good it is. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. Oh, I'm so sorry, Fred. <laughs> yeah, as, as the guy who's gotten stabbed twice <laughs> <Yeah>. now, <laughs> I, I vote. Not friendly merchants. <laughs> they just wanted to show how good the stuff was. That's not Penwin anymore. <laughs> That's Stop having empathy. This is out of character. <laughs> is it? <laughs> um, Maybe. <laughs> he seems to be pretty well taken care of. And I just sort of hike up my pants <laughs> and sit down in the sand and just kind of lean on my staff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... The sailor is going to like wade out a few more feet, maybe ten feet, kind of stare, look over at um, Can, and then nod, and then like kind of looks over at you, Nez, and does like the exact same thing, stabs the oar <laughs> in, and like sits down and leans up against it. But he's now in the water, uh, <laughs> like just, very shallow, like six <laughs> inches of water. He's just like, <laughs> 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 um, and that is now this thing's turn and it is a it has to make a strength, strength save well is he ending his turn i mean he can't really do it he can't yeah he's gotcha yeah he's okay, also just wanted to technically clarify. restrained so yeah, he's, um, fucked. <laughs> he has no, he's just gonna give up um no he's at he's going to end his turn but as he does can and gill give me perception checks 18 natural 20 Whoa, Woo! nice. All right. So you guys, uh, you're, in the air, you were, uh, both, you both hear like this weird <laughs> sound and it seems to be coming from ahead. You're not though that as, as good as you feel like your perception is in that moment, it's not quite good enough. However, can you're positive that this sound is coming from inside of the dust devil and it doesn't just sound like a little chirping sound. It sounds almost like a call of some kind. <laughs> I I try to mimic the noise back at it. Um, it's the Nokia cell phone ring. Uh, I'll let you use. Uh, oh no, you use your bonus action, so you, you'll have to wait till your next turn. Um, uh, it gets louder. It's almost as if you're starting to think that it's like like some a summoning kind of sound as if it's begging for help in some in some way that's what you get from that perception there's just there's something about it you're like this seems bad and then you guys all hear off in the distance and you watch as a wave rolls out toward you about 10 feet high i'm going to need everybody to give me a, str a strength save i got a natural one boy i got a 19 19 17 okay 18 17 18 19 natural one you bet your ass baby <laughs> <laughs> and let's check the sailor who will have advantage as well nah, it's all right um so yeah this wave rolls in and all of you guys like are pretty much able to withstand this wave however it comes down right at your ankle <laughs> level, Gil, and just sweeps you off your feet and sends you careening back about 40 feet across across the beach. And you, yeah, you are now <laughs> just off in the distance near the trees. The rest of you wait for this wave to kind of subside, and then you see a shape emerge from beyond. This massive, like, 30-foot weird Dick aquatic shark monster. leviathan like creature <laughs> Seth we're just starting oh I know <laughs> <laughs> remember how I said there was a chance of death boo <laughs> yes uh, god it'd be so awesome if Nez just fucking died <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even That's get to a weird opinion. anything <laughs> this thing emerges just just beyond the shallows just lifts itself up and <laughs> He's wearing the Daniel Craig shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and it's this, it's got this yeah, long cylindrical head, like a sharp dragonish almost nose with tendrils kind of flopping out, but it is very tall and it seems to be made comprised of mostly fins. Very similar to this mini. Um, Those are hands. Oh, I can't see the front. It's horrible. Um, just, just replace <laughs> the hands with fins. Yes. Um, and it's, it's like a dark blue and it's got bright red eyes. 
and it looks at all of you, and it starts, like, waggling back and forth, and you guys watch as, after a moment, the water that's moving back and forth suddenly raises up no. into the air, getting about 15, 20, 25 feet high, and starts to, like, in weird sections, like, almost like pillars, and then starts to weave together, almost like a braid. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. But this the, you guys art notice was expensive. <laughs> 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 then you notice that the creature itself seems confused by this as the braided water transforms into a large water elemental and flashes <laughs> forward through the water and shoves this creature back as it <laughs> flies off about 50 feet peeks its head back up, and then darts away. Okay. Oh. So it's... We have retreat. a guardian. You guys watch We couldn't as, hear from there, but the it yelled, Fuck you guys! <laughs> before you guys watch as the braided water kind of, like, settles, and slowly into the shallow end, you see, a, like, a small, older-looking halfling. Scruffy beard, bald pate with long, braided hair in the back, very relaxed expression, and he looks over. Hey, Ken. You see Uchi. <laughs> Uchi. Uchi, mama. Uchi, how did you get out there? What are you doing? I was just, you know, in the neighborhood. And then my grandson, Peach, told me to come out here and help you guys. Good thing I did, because I saw that huge thing out there. Whoa, that was a mess. I don't recognize that, like, at all. Yeah, no, I've never seen something like that before. That was wild. But if I had to guess, and he looks around, I'd say somebody that showed up onto the shore doesn't need to be here. And that's where we're going to end for the night. Oh. Are we going to do something about that other guy? <laughs> <laughs> Just spinning in the whirlwind? <laughs> <laughs> Loki, I was totally going to run away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck this! Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Uh, yeah, that seemed like a wow. good opportunity to fuck off. That was uh, it's my cue to exit. All right, so, end of the first session of season two. Oh, wow. the buckets. <sighs> well, now, weird. I think it's, uh, tell me why you deserve inspiration. I was an expert diplomat. Hmm. Anyone else? Plus, I raked a dude's face off. <laughs> I killed the dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fee, you killed the guy. Fee killed the guy. <laughs> she didn't intend and, to. And Ned's got hit by a trident. I didn't yeah. <laughs> first Twice. episode, but uh, here we are. I'm a damage magnet. Damage magnet. I welcome people to the island. <laughs> you welcome yeah. people to your island. Uh, all right, everybody, we'll start the next session with inspiration. Yay! Hmm. Interesting. Which means you'll get yeah. advantage. Now, what we're going to do for the MVPC. You want to explain what that yeah, is? Yeah, what? The MVPC oh. is the most valuable player character. I want you guys to tell me who deserves a D10 of inspiration starting the next session. This will be your benefit until you, you know, until we get to the sta high stage of the game where you get Boone again. <laughs> um, so what I want you to do is tell me who deserves this, who was the coolest or who did the most interesting thing, or just who do you think just gets it? Who, who, who should have this D10 of inspiration? <laughs> For your benefit, Willem is one. Sorry. For your benefit, <laughs> Nezra is one. Gil is two. Two, Fee is three, hey, <laughs> and Can is four. Now, at the count of three, I want you guys to hold up the finger, the number of fingers corresponding with the person you would like to vote for. And uh, yeah, then we'll decide who the MVPC is. So take a moment. Everyone ready? All right. Three, two, one, vote. Uh, I can't, you flip your hand. Okay. I've got, wow, two votes for Fee, and two votes for Gil. Can, I want you to tell me why you voted for Fee. I voted for Fee because right out of the gate, just, whoa. Like, <laughs> heavy hitter. And you don't see that a lot. 
So, and really cool hair too. So, <laughs> <laughs> Very that, nice. that's that's what it is for me. <laughs> Very cool, uh, Gil. Why'd you vote for Fee? Ah, uh, that is long and short of it. Uh, she <laughs> killed a guy. Very impressive. <laughs> And, and the hair, it's... The hair is very cool, too. I appreciate it. it. changing colors? Yeah. Too. That's not something you see every day. <laughs> it's like those one dolls. I don't remember, like, where the hair gets wet. Hair changey dolls? Hair changey dolls. That's By Milton one. Bradley? <laughs> That's her. Fee, why did you vote for Gil? Um, he, we were in a pickle, and he killed a guy, and it was really, really helpful, so... I uh, yeah, that <laughs> so was killing really is good. Vote, this is like. the standard we hold ourselves to. <laughs> I also really like Murder. the the voice and the character. I think he's funny. I like everyone though. This is exciting. I'm just like big nerves with this first episode. I think I'll feel better when it's not the first one anymore. Well, it's you know almost over. I you know. got there. You got there. Nezra. Why did you vote for Gil? Well, at first I thought we were going to be at a disadvantage because of. Kills disadvantage. <laughs> but then he... What are you referring to? Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I got this, man. I didn't see that. But then he lifted his eye patch and he shot a laser beam out of his eye. Hmm. And I find that quite interesting and I would like to know more about that. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I think that means we've got a two-way split for the very first MVPC yeah. of Season 2. Give it up for whoop, whoop. Gildebrand Milani and... Ophelia Ray Midori! Ophelia Ray Midori! Rye, Rye, Ray. Wee, wee, wee! <laughs> yeah. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. yeah, celebrate more. What the fuck? Season 2. Sorry, I was listening to them talking. Uh, <laughs> there we go. I unhooked my headphones. Ah! <laughs> That's too much celebrating. <laughs> Dial it back. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what did you guys think of the first episode? How'd you feel? <sighs> nervous. I'm nervous. It's so weird. Really excited to use different abilities. Yeah. Um, it'll be fun. Mixing things up. Uh, it's interesting because I definitely forgot some stuff <laughs> as I was doing stuff. But, yeah. It seemed like in, you had a fucking handle moment. on it, bud. I felt good. <laughs> yeah? I felt good. That's good. It. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to try some berries. Uh, yeah, excited <laughs> yeah. to go to town, see what's next. All right. Well, thanks for listening, folks. Thanks to me for that awesome intro song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you'll need to shout yourself out every time now. Every time. You will seek legal it action your, otherwise. <laughs> is it your part of your writer? Yeah. Wh what? Yes, it's it is. It's part of your writer. That and the brown M&Ms. Um, <laughs> and the will goat you, skull. We had um, to beat him to death with his own Why does shoes? the skull have to be bleeding? That's... That's a big ass no, every time. No, it's it's not bleeding. It's bleeding. bleating. Oh. It's a ghost skull. <laughs> okay. That's nice. Fair. We were on Headphones. the same wavelength. <laughs> Headphones. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks to everyone. Uh, please, 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 if you like what you hear, check out our Apple podcast or really anywhere where you're listening to this that has a rating system. Give us five stars if you are so kind and leave a review. As you know, we will read every single review wherever we find it on an episode. Also, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash d20 underscore syndicate. As we mentioned earlier, we've got a bunch of cool tiers and uh, you're probably going to find something on there that uh, fits perfect for you, like a glove. Also, check out our Discord. Check out our gloves. Check out our gloves <laughs> and our Discord gloves. <laughs> They're on sale. Um, in the episode description, we have a link to our Discord. Come hang out with us. Free. Free. Absolutely free of charge. Free. We're no longer charging $38,000 a year for it. <laughs> Turned out not many takers. I don't know why. But. Well, that's it for tonight, folks. Once again, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to our first episode of Season 2, Into the Yonder Void. That's it for tonight. I am your host and DM, Seth, and this is the D20 Syndicate Podcast, where we go on adventures so you don't have to. Goodbye! Whoa.
can, can, can. Because we can, can, can. <laughs> Sorry, I'm playing the metronome. <laughs> I'm just hitting it with <laughs> with a brush. <laughs> oh, I love that song. <laughs> metronome. <laughs> metronome, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Point a boon to me. I'm the DM. Metronome means no. <laughs> You go through Taco John's to get the diarrhea. Olays. <laughs> it's all diarrhea, you <laughs> nincompoop. I've uh, never heard this before. Like, I like both of them, but I always thought people preferred Taco John's. I've never but gotten for diarrhea. Why? From Taco Bell and Taco John's. Maybe. I prefer Taco Bell. If I'm going to have them, I don't really like either. I think yeah. Taco Bell tastes more obviously like processed. Yeah, like I mean, stuff you're both, not supposed to both. eat. Like shit, <laughs> you're like this is actively hurting me inside. But see, Taco John's just seems dirty. Yeah. Yeah. It's it seems like I eat it, I'm like I feel bad instantly. It's yeah. just greasy tacos, and also the only seasonings they use are like seasoning salt. <laughs> it's like Lowry's. Yeah, yeah. like what? Oh. What the fuck are potato Olays? They are tots. I, I fucking love them though. Yeah, I fucking I like, love them. I and then they're like, like, you want a big ass burrito and you want us to just like do the work for you and put the tots in there? We got you, if, baby. I don't know if it's the marketing or what, but there's something about potato Olays that just makes them better than tots. I'm not a, I'm not a big potato Olay fan. I think it's the seasoning salt because I'm fine with tater tots. Oh they kind fuck. of overdo it with the seasoning salt, in my opinion. They do I've sometimes. I always kind of felt like I, I have I zero I'm arguments. I'm glad we're on the same page. I have zero valid but, arguments but, against but that. He likes but it. Though. I'll <laughs> inject it. <laughs> straight into my veins. I do. Different I like strokes. the variety that Taco Bell has. Like, you can get a bowl They do there. have a lot of variety. And I love a bowl. You can get a fucking taco with, like, breaded chicken for the tortilla. <laughs> so, they don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, they, they're like, we know this is bad. Fuck you. Sign this waiver. It's yeah, like dude. when KFC came out with that chicken sandwich that was chicken. Chicken. Yeah. Chicken. yeah. <laughs> dude, yeah. It's like they fucking, it's Project Paperclip. It's all the fucking mad scientists <laughs> from Nazi Germany, and they're just like, make us fast food. And this is what they're coming up with. And it's amazing. It's science and fat. <laughs> and like I said, just put it in my veins. Personally, so you like Taco John's for the scientific element of it. <laughs> no, no, no. That's Taco Bell. Taco Bell has the more crazy mad scientist shit going on. Oh, yeah. Didn't they yeah, do they the taco not. that was made of a Dorito? Yeah, yeah Doritos yeah. Locos. They still uh, have Locos, yeah. Personally, Damn. okay, so... Taco Bell is my favorite. You're smirk. So well, I'm happy because most people are like, like you fucking personal. idiot. Why do you like Taco Bell? No, what? You just did it. I what are you for fun? What are you oh, doing? I do it for fun. It was too seamless. That couldn't have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's too natural for fun. So normally it's my favorite, but then I get razzed on or... People are like, I want to go to Taco John's instead. We That's like. just me and the kids because we like. I, <laughs> the, wow. <laughs> wow, Lindsay. You're gonna, there's no one outside of our world. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I like Taco well, Bell more and they really lean into and embrace the like, fuck it. You're having this at 1 a.m. or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sure This do. is garbage. You know it is. We know it is. There's Enjoy. no pretense. Yeah. I also love that Taco Bell did like a diet push for a while. Yeah. And they were like, here's how much weight you can lose eating our tacos every day. <laughs> <laughs> and like there was barely any difference with the taco from their regular kind. They just put more tomatoes on it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But I liked it. <laughs> it. Sold me. Hook, Filthy. line, and sinker. I think it was their fresco menu. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what it was. I was yep. going to say, they had something. Do they not I, have fresco anymore? I don't know. I, I, don't, think, I, I don't think it's under the fresco family anymore. <laughs> for some reason, I kept thinking fresco. They were disowned. <laughs> I could go for a fresco. But they right? had it was I think it was the fresco bowl before yep. the fresco power bowl, and now yep. I think it's just a power bowl. Which I remember you showed up. Fucking dope. You showed up when we were recording yeah. at their place. You were like, yeah. I got the the Taco Bell fresco power bowl, and I was like, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's the best thing on the menu. <laughs> Oh man, I should have had a little Swedish accent. I, I can't do that though, I don't think. Oh yes, little beer. Nope, that was very. I don't that know what perfect. that was. <laughs> what are you talking Am I about? From Sweden? Put your headphones on, Tomas. 
<laughs> That's the most real when I put headphones on. <laughs> Reality can fuck off. If I watch a show with a lot of Swedish people, then after it, I'm like, oh my god, I'm like I'm so good at a Swedish accent now. I'm basically, I'm like, put assimilated. me in the Swedish accent contest. I'm there. I'll win. Are there straight like, up the just popular Swedish shows? Because I would watch that. Okay. Yeah, there's a uh, Lily Hammer. Was Lily dark Hammer. German or German? Yeah. Swedish. Um, was Ragnarok? No. Hello. I, Hello? I didn't see it, but yeah, I, I prob- it was probably one of the it Scandinavians. That was also a Ragnarok pilot recommendation, but I watched that one right away. Letter Kenny, I put off for like three That's years. That's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Swedish. <laughs> Where is Switzerland? <laughs> so maybe I've never seen. <laughs> Bam! Got it. <laughs> <laughs> solid. Rock maybe solid. I've never seen a Swiss show. Actually, <laughs> I don't know. Your only frame of reference is the Swedish chef. <laughs> I'm sorry to Switzerland sounds, and Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts and on Swiss Canada, rolls? I guess. Swiss cake rolls? Yeah. The yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Freeze them. Uh, never okay. frozen. Never had a I chance to eat just them eat them first. <laughs> <laughs> they're gone. I like start them putting them in there, and they're already gone. We would seriously buy a box, and like the family will have eaten them by the time we had gotten like home. Piranha, it's like piranhas, like like a person <laughs> paddling across a uh, piranha-filled pond. <laughs> yep. How many did you have? Like ten. <laughs> yeah, you there just were like do, five in the box. You do the time lapse edit where five it's the pairs. person walking in normal speed with the box, and everything else around him is moving at <laughs> hyper speed, and it's playing needle in the hay as they make their way to the freezer. And by the time they get there, the box is like disintegrated. <laughs> just places, yeah, like the uh, the UPC. On Why them. do they look so <laughs> yummy? I'm sorry for the people that come here for the D and D. I know that it never really happens that way. But I mean, this will be at the end. They already got what they wanted. Yeah, entrapment. <laughs> That's like <laughs> blackmail entrapment. Try to catch me on the way to Dubuque. <laughs> Just cross the bridge, baby, and I'm home free. Just a line of tasers. <laughs> <laughs> And they don't even aim. Fire. They just all fire straight <laughs> forward and just whatever it is, me. Every part of his body is covered with taser. Lights you up like the 4th of July. <laughs> Wait, your name is Taserface? <laughs> Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Tylenol's legal, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to jail, Lindsay. <laughs> and we're not going to help you at and all. I, I haven't even done it yet. I'll visit you. <laughs> For a while, then I'll lose interest. They're like, you shouldn't Life have goes on. Come on. Hi, Lindsay. And I was like, <laughs> You're smoking Tylenol back in body. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she does like the sweet tart things that the kids do. She crushes them up and pretends like she's just smoking them. Wee woo, wee she mixes woo. it into essential oil she, and just she, inhales she, the, the mist. She turned herself in that way. Wee woo, wee woo. Just, just kicks the door into the fucking police station. Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. Dances up to the front desk and just like puts her ID on the counter. She gets arrested for disturbing the peace instead. <laughs> They're like, oh shit, another one. (laughs) Ma'am, shut up. (laughs) She's got like a fucking Punch Heroes punch card. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I thought you were implying that she's trying to buy a burrito at the police station. (laughs) That's good too. That's good too. (laughs) (laughs) Ma'am, that's a library card. (laughs) This is a gas station. But will it get me me burritos? (laughs) Not in this country. I would like to check out two burritos (laughs) then. <laughs> one steak, one chicken. <laughs> I'm not greedy. <laughs> I'm not gonna return him so you can find me. <laughs> <laughs> so how about that? Now make with the burritos. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said that before you gave me the burritos. I'm pretty fucking high right now. <laughs> I'm high on the on all this. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Befrito. <laughs> Did you hear my oh, joke? We need to start what it. if someone's name was Marlon Brandon? Their name would be Marlon Brandon. <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> it's not. Because <laughs> there's definitely someone out there named that. <laughs> and they're listening to our podcast and now they're like, oh. Oh, my name's a joke. It's not. It's a pretty regular. <laughs> okay, 
but I bet they get like calls from someone like, hello, probably... is this Marlon Brando? I don't think anyone's trying to call Marlon Brando. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't assume, we can't assume that they're not trying to call Marlon Brando. I mean, telephone books. <laughs> the... You need a fucking Ouija board, not a phone book. <laughs> to make a quiet call. No. Wait, who the fuck is using a Ouija board to get in touch with Marlon Brando? How else are you gonna? Like, what question do you have? Uh, now which, you still interested in that role I wrote for you? <laughs> what was up with Apocalypse Now, man? She slaps her palm against the torn fabric and concentrates. The chaos... <laughs> I dropped that. Sorry. I like that you committed to it. I'll just edit it together. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck. Oh, uh, man.